A log linear model simply means we take the log of the outcome variable. Why do that? For good reasons. First, it pulls skewed data towards a more symmetric shape. Second, it straightens curved or nonlinear relationships so a straight line fits better. Third, it evens out the spread of errors, keeping their variability more constant instead of growing with the mean. By addressing these issues, logging the response often gives us more trustworthy tests and predictions and usually better model performance. Finally, it makes effects easy to read as percentage changes of the outcome with one unit change in predictor. A simple steady percentage slope that's intuitive to explain. So think of logging the outcome like trading a roller coaster for a smooth highway or putting on glasses to see the pattern clearly. Let's see how to do it in R. We'll use the wage dataset to model how a categorical predictor education and the numeric predictor age impact the log transformed salary. To make sure we really need a log linear model instead of a normal one, we compare predictions and normality of residuals of both linear and log linear models side by side. The log linear model fits the data much better, and the residuals stay inside of the gray confidence band, so they are normalized. With a categorical predictor like education, our goal is to estimate how wages differ proportionally across education levels. Since one picture is worth a thousand words, let's visualize the results via my favorite immense package. Using the type equals response argument in the immip function automatically back transforms our locked salary values to the original wage scale. So the y-axis shows actual wages rather than locked wages. If you know a better way to visualize back transform predictions, drop a comment below the video. The plot shows that the confidence intervals don't overlap, which suggests real differences. To confirm that formally, we'll use a means function on our model and keep everything on the original dollar scale by setting argument type to response again. We'll also ask for 95% confidence intervals with infer equals true argument and use reversed pairwise comparisons so the reported ratios are above 1, because they are much easier to read than ratios below 1. The means package returns average wages for each education group and the pairwise comparisons between groups. The best part it means conveniently back transform the log predictions to actual dollars, so the results are easy to interpret. The p values are automatically tukey adjusted from multiple comparisons, so you don't even need to care about type 1 error. And the reported intervals are 95% intervals by default. Now let's dig into what the numbers actually mean. They tell us that higher education is linked to notably higher wages. People with high school or less earn about $87,000 on average per year. College degree boosts wages to around $112,000 per year. And an advanced degree like master's or PhD pushes wages up to about $145,000 per year. The response on a log scale can be easily interpreted with ratios, or percent changes, by simply dividing one group's wage by another. For example, if we divide the 112,000 average for college grads by the 87,000 for high school grads, we get 1.28, which means college grads earn 1.28 times more, or a solid 28% boost. So, going to college literally pays off compared to just finishing high school. Similarly, dividing the 145,000 for university grads by the 87,000 high school baseline gives us 1.66. So, university degrees comes with a 1.66 times the salary, or a whopping 66% increase. And finally, University grads earn 1.3 times more than college grads alone. That's another 30% on top. So the big takeaway here is that education level has a clear positive 
multiplicative, not additive effect on wages. Each step up from high school to college to advanced reliably boosts expected pay by roughly 30%. In the log model, a one unit change in predictor corresponds to a percentage change in the outcome. Interpreting numeric predictors is even easier because we mostly need one number, the slope. We can visualize it with a MIP or, even more conveniently, with plot model from the SJPlot package. This works because a logarithmic scale condenses large distances and expands small distances. To get the actual slope, we'll use table regression function from the GT summary package. It shows that a one-year increase in age raises expected salary by about 1%. In other words, each extra year of experience increases the salary by a factor of 1.01. This means a constant proportional growth rate, like compound interests, applied yearly, regardless of current wage. If one number isn't enough and you want salaries at specific ages and the differences between them, we can use a means function and specify the exact ages we want. For example, the average salary of about 102k at age 40 is nearly 20% higher than the 86k at age 20, consistent with a 1% per year slope, giving about a 20% gain over 20 years. Similarly, going from 40 to 80 years yields about a 40% increase. Pretty clear, right? So, the key takeaways are logging the response tames high outliers, stabilizes variances, and often turns exponential growth into a straight line trend. It also makes interpretation more intuitive by expressing effects as percentage changes in the outcome for a one unit increase in the predictor. However, one last but very important question you might have why some people leave the response as it is but log transform the predictor instead. Because that easily solves a different set of common data issues you often have in your data. And if you want to become a world-class data scientist, you really need to watch the video on linear log model next.